In this video, we're going to compute some finite sums using the formulas above. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's start maybe by looking at this one. Let's take the finite sum as i runs from 1 to 100 of 3. So in this case, we're just adding 3, and there's n copies of 3. So it's 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. So it's, it should be 3 times 100, right? If you do 3 plus 3, you get 3 times 2, which is 6. If you do 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, there's four threes, so you get 3 times 4, which is 12. So if you have 100 threes, you should get 3 times 100, which is 300. Of course, you can just use the formula. Here, c is equal to 3, and it's just n times c. n is 100, so it's just 100 times 3, which is 300. Let's do another one. What if we had the sum as i runs from 1 to 50 of 6. Well, then it's just 6 times 50. So 6 times 50, which is 300. Now, a, a word of warning, um, th the sum has to start at 1. So if it starts at a different number, uh, this formula fails. Let's do another one. Let's look at the sum as i runs from 1 to 20 of 8. Well, in this case, it's just 8 times 20, which is 160. So those were pretty easy examples. Let's try something a little bit harder. What about the sum as i runs from 1 to 15 of i squared? In this case, you want to use the third formula. So n is 15, right, because here's our n. And all you do is just plug the n in plug the 15 in for the n. So you get 15, and then 15 plus 1 is 16, and then 2 times 15 is 30, and you add 1, so you get 31, and all of this is being divided by 6. If you work this out, you should get 1240. Let's try another one, a little bit harder. Let's look at the sum as i runs from 1 to 60 of i cubed minus 2i squared. So let's be really careful here. So in this case, we want to break it up. Okay, we want to break it up carefully. So this is the sum as i runs from 1 to 60 of i cubed minus 2 times the sum. So you're allowed to pull stuff out that doesn't involve i's. Anything that doesn't have an i, you can take it out. All right, this is equal to, so for this first one here, we're going to use formula 4. So it'll be 60 squared instead of n, and then 60 plus 1 is 61. So times 61 squared. Let me put that 60 in parentheses so it looks a little bit better. There we go. And we're dividing this by 4. Minus 2 times, and then this thing here, we're going to use formula 3 again. So we're going to replace all of the n's with 60's. So it'll be 60, and then 61, and let's see, 2 times 60 is 120. You add 1, you get 121. And all of this is being divided by 6. If you put this into your calculator, you should get 3,201,280. So pretty ridiculous number. Uh, let's do another one, although I'm going to have to move this down, so hopefully you have the formulas memorized by now. Uh, let's see, another example. How about this one? i goes from 1 to 100, let's say, of 3i. So in this case, we'll use this formula here. I'll write it down again. This is n, m plus 1, all divided by 2. So the 3 hangs out. You get times, and then n here is 100. So you have 100, then 100 and 1. And this is being divided by 2. If you put this in your calculator, you should get 
150. So I think that's good. It's all about knowing the formulas. Um, an easy trick to remember formula number four is to look at this one here. If you square this, you get this, right? n squared is n squared. n plus 1 squared is n plus 1 squared. 2 squared is 4. So nice, cheap memory trick. What about this one? I honestly don't know a nice way. I just remember it's n, n plus 1, and then it's got the weird 2n plus 1, and it's being divided by 6. I guess it's not weird, but it's harder to memorize this one than it is to memorize the others. I hope this helps.